Good morning and welcome to OldStMary's.com, a ministry of Old St. Mary's Parish in the South Loop of Chicago, where on this Friday of the 26th week in Ordinary Time, we celebrate the memorial of St. Therese of the Child Jesus, Virgin and Doctor of the Church, more commonly known as St. Therese of Lisieux. The Lord led her and taught her and kept her as the apple of his eye. Like an eagle spreading its wings, he took her up and bore her on his shoulders. The Lord alone was her guide. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, as we gather together today, we are conscious that St. Therese is one of our more contemporary saints, also one of the most reflected on and studied. She made a promise to us, and the promise was because she, had, she died at 24, uh, she was in the convent from the age of 15 to 24, but she made the promise that because of her short time on earth, that when she got to heaven, she would do great things for the people of the earth. And so many people reflect on her life and her wisdom. And so she's also honored as doctor of the church. So as we come together to reflect on that, let us also acknowledge our sinfulness that leads us to our constant need for God's mercy. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who open your kingdom to those who are humble and to the little ones, lead us to follow trustingly in the little way of St. Therese, so that through her intercession we may see your eternal glory revealed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Baruch. During the Babylonian captip captivity, the exiles prayed, justice is with the Lord our God, and we today are flushed with shame. We men of Judah and citizens of Jerusalem, that we with our kings and rulers and priests and prophets and with our ancestors have sinned in the Lord's sight and disobeyed him. We have neither heeded the voice of the Lord our God, nor followed the precepts which the Lord set before us. From the time the Lord led our ancestors out of the land of Egypt until the present day, we have been disobedient to the Lord our God, and only too ready to disregard his voice. 
and the evils and the curse that the Lord enjoined upon Moses, his servant, at the time he led our ancestors forth from the land of Egypt to give us the land flowing with milk and honey, cling to us even today. For we did not heed the voice of the Lord our God in all the words of the prophets whom he sent us, but each one of us went off after the devices of its own wicked heart, served other gods, and did evil in the sight of the Lord our God. The word of the Lord. For the glory of your name, O Lord, deliver us. For the glory of your name, O Lord, deliver us. O God, the nations have come into your inheritance. They have defiled your holy temple. They have laid Jerusalem in ruins. They have given the courts of your servants as food to the birds of heaven the flesh of your faithful ones to the beasts of the earth. For the glory of your name, O Lord, deliver us. They have poured out their blood like water round about Jerusalem, and there is no one to bury them. We have become the reproach of our neighbors, the scorn and derision of those around us. O Lord, how long will you be angry forever? Will your jealousy burn like fire? For the glory of your name, O Lord, deliver us. Remember not against us the inequities of the past. May your compassion quickly come to us, for we are brought very low. For the glory of your name, O Lord, deliver us. Help us, O God our Savior, because of the glory of your name. Deliver us and pardon our sins for your name's sake. For the glory of your name, O Lord, deliver us. Alleluia, alleluia. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to them, Woe to you, Chorazin! Woe to you, Bethsaida! For if the mighty deeds done in your midst had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would long ago have repented, sitting in sackcloth and ashes. But it will be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon at the judgment than for you. And as for you, Capernaum, will you be exalted to the heaven? You will go down to the netherworld. Whoever listens to you listens to me. Whoever rejects you rejects me. And whoever rejects me rejects the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. If we pay a lot of attention to the readings today, they're uh, they're kind of strange in that the first reading is still talking about the temple, the restoration of the people, the the need for reconciliation to be connected to that. And the gospel today, when you hear woe, you can also hear woe meaning it's a curse. It's Jesus is condemning the cities that he's talking about for not following the way of God, for not paying attention to God and doing what they are supposed to be doing. So that's all I'm going to say about the readings today, (laughs) Uh, except to get us into Therese of Lisieux, who, as I said in the beginning, is is probably one of the the best known of our saints. I I mean, certainly along with Francis of Assisi these days, uh, she is someone who captures many people's hearts because she captured in her own heart a connection with God. And so her way, her, what she teaches us as a doctor of the church, is called the little way. The little way is realizing that when you hear the Lord and respond in whatever way 
fits you, you're doing the right thing. Whatever little things you do, if they are connected with God, will have and bear great fruit. So Therese was born into a very devout Catholic family. Two of her sisters were also sisters or nuns in the same convent. Um, as I said, Therese entered the convent at 15. Everyone tried to hold her back, but, but she just wanted to be in there and be close to Christ. So in a certain sense, you could say that, that Therese lived in a building certainly no bigger than our church campus over here and never left. Her whole life was, was there. It was dedicated to prayer, prayer before the Blessed Sacrament. It, it was meant doing the, the menial tasks of caring for the building, washing floors, dishes, all of that. And in the midst of it all, she has tuberculosis. So we know something these days about diseases and diseases that are spread easily. Therese did not live a very long life, and she had to deal with this, this chronic illness, this suffering that came with it from 15 to 24. But it's in the midst of all this, however, that she really does extraordinary things. She is always trying to be conscious of the Lord, and whatever she does, she's trying to say, I know you're here with me, Lord, and you're guiding me. Take what I do and use it for the good of others. She was actually, uh, she is a patron saint of pilots. Did you know that? Which might seem kind of strange because in the time she lived, there weren't much, or there wasn't much in the way of flight as we know it today. But she had this ability within her bed, within her room, to go anywhere she needed to go. That, that she took flight. She, she could get to the furthest ends of the world. And she had a deep love and a deep interest in foreign missionary work. She was deeply devoted to that. And even though she never did it, she would write letters to people, not just missionaries, but other people in the world from her bed and give them an understanding that God was with them in what they do. So she took great flight in being able to share her message with the world, even though she never left the confines of the convent herself. It created a special effect for those people who, who, um, who um, she would lead to heaven and to reflect on it. She reminds us in the little way that each of us also has a mission and has the ability to take flight. When we gather for prayer, when we gather at Mass, when we are connected with Jesus, it takes us beyond the boundaries of our world and it takes us beyond the boundaries of our space. She never forgot that by being quiet and before God, and connecting to God in mass and prayer, that she was unbounded. The, the other thing you could say about that was she was selfless in her love and devotion for others in the church. By just praying, just being present to Jesus, she shows us a key for everyone who follows Christ. So the invitation for us all is to be like her, to let go of a preoccupation with ourselves and look to Jesus, look to the world, look for the ways that we can help God be known in all we do. And in that way, we each become missionaries. As long as we are looking to Christ, as opposed to looking just to what we want to do or what we're trying to get, if we look to Christ and ask, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to get? Then we are following Teresa's little way. She was happy to be just another one of the nuns. She appreciated being a hidden self there. She didn't have a lot of notoriety until really after she dies. And she has this wonderful autobiography that she has left us. Again, I, I quote the line that, that is probably most often connected with her. I want to spend my heaven doing good on earth. That's her call, that's her understanding, and the graces that have flowed from that have helped many people. In our reflecting on her, 
may we come to see the little ways that we have to bring God into our world today. Let us raise up our prayers. Let us pray for the church, pray for all of us, that we will hear our particular calls to be missionaries, to share the good news of Christ. We pray to the Lord. We pray that the world will be open to the message of Christ and that our leaders will lead us forward with true care for all people and good use of all our talents and abilities. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all of those who live a religious life, especially those in convents and monasteries where uh, they are cloistered, in particular the Carmelites of which Therese was part of, that their example of prayer will lead us forward. We pray to the Lord. Let us pray for each of us that we will hear our vocation call from God and follow where he leads us. We pray to the Lord. Let us pray for all the sick and the suffering, all those who care for the ill, all those who care for people with various medical conditions. We pray to the Lord. We pause a moment to let the people who are joining us online raise their prayers in their homes and their places as we think what those may be in our own hearts. For these prayers, we pray to the Lord. And for all who have asked us for prayer, all those for whom we have promised to pray, those who have no one to pray for them, people who are at crossroads in their lives today, making decisions about their future and other, future, and other futures, and for all of us. And in a particular way, we are asked to remember today Frank Stone. We pray to the Lord. Gracious God, accept the prayers we place before you with confidence through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread we offer, fruit of earth, work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Amen. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share the divinity of Christ, and himself to share our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this wine we offer, fruit of the vine, work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Lord, wash away my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin.
Pray, sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O Lord, as we proclaim your wonders in St. Therese, we humbly implore your majesty that as her merits were pleasing to you, so too our dutiful service may find favor in your sight. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Holy Father, Lord of heaven and earth, through Christ our Lord. For by your word you created the world, and you govern all things in harmony. You gave us the same word, made flesh as mediator, and he has spoken your words to us and called us to follow him. He is the way that leads us to you, the truth that sets us free, the life that fills us with gladness. Through your Son, you gather men and women whom you have made for the glory of your name into one family, redeemed by the blood of his Spirit, and signed with the seal of the cross. Therefore, now and for ages unending, with all the angels and saints, we proclaim your glory, as in joyful celebration we acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy and to be glorified to God who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love and when as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, most merciful Father, we ask you to send forth your Holy Spirit, sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son in whose body and blood we have communion. By our partaking of this mystery, Almighty Father, Give us life through your Spirit. Grant that we may be conformed to the image of your Son and confirm us in the bond of communion, together with Francis, our Pope, and Blaise, our Bishop, 
with all other bishops, priests, and deacons, and your entire people. Grant that all the faithful of the Church, looking into the signs of the times by the light of faith, may constantly devote themselves to service of the gospel and follow its simple way. Keep us attentive to the needs of all, that sharing their grief and pain, their joy and hope, we may faithfully bring them the good news of salvation and go forward with them along the way of your kingdom. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever, there in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, with St. Therese of the child Jesus, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. For through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Jesus taught us to call God Father, so we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. Amen. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be. of Christ.
Let us pray. O Lord, may the sacrament we have received kindle in us the force of that love with which St. Therese dedicated herself to you and longed to obtain mercy for all, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our Mass is ended. We go in the peace and love of Christ. Just a reminder that tomorrow is the St. Francis Day pet blessing at 11 o'clock in the Wabash parking lot. Father Stu's looking for turtles. <laughs>